All right, guys, automatic garage back today. We have this beautiful 04 60 F350. It is a two wheel drive, but it only has 38,000 original miles. That's correct, 38,000 original miles. Let me turn you around here and just take in awe of how nothing has been messed with, broken, cracked, whatever. Just don't ever see this. So for those of you that actually wrench on these, you can see how much stuff is not cracked here. Even the badge is here unmolested. Your wire loom harness there and all the tabs are also there, no zip ties holding anything together. Everything is exactly the way that it should be. Wiring harness has never been moved, running correctly, none of that stuff. This is something that I seldom ever get to see like this, which is nice. I'll be one of the first people to do any serious work on this truck ever, which I consider to honor that he wanted nobody to work on it but me. Um, I'll say his name, Pete, was not afraid to uh, send his truck to me. Said, hey, I don't want anybody wrenched on it but you. Uh, he's about four hours away from me. He's also one of the, the first, probably I would say, original subscribers other than family and friends that, that followed me thoroughly, commented on videos, asked questions. He went to the website, got my number. We've become very good friends over the phone. When he comes back to pick the truck up, I plan on us having some, some cold ones together and enjoying doing some talking. He's a Navy veteran and everything else. Great guy. So anyways, I'm gonna walk you back here to this table and I'm gonna show you everything that he has bought that he wants me to do to this truck. So this is something else that seldom ever happens. Somebody shows up with every single part they need from sensors and everything to do the whole job. So nothing's actually wrong with this truck. Uh, this is all just add on, make better goodies. Not necessarily go fast goodies, but make better goodies. So this truck is not studded. It's not EGR deleted, nothing. Like I said, it is totally unmolested from the belts and everything or the original that left the factory with. Um, so what we're doing, we got a bulletproof diesel EGR cooler. We got the bulletproof diesel external oil cooler. And this is the one, if I believe correctly, I haven't read through the instructions and stuff yet, but it retains the original oil filter housing up on top of the motor. Does not have the remote filter like we put on Gary's truck, if y'all have watched that video that we did. So this will be a little bit different. I haven't installed this particular kit from bulletproof diesel. Um, we got everything from brand new motor crap or Ford turbo drain back turbo feed we got our anti-drain back valve for the oil filter a new exhaust back pressure sensor blue spring mod new egr gaskets we got a new oil filter stand pipe all the bulletproof diesel oil cooler stuff we got the uh, bypass oil filter adapter stuff here we're going to do the the low whatever low pressure bypass filter hadn't installed that before either we're going to do that we got coolant filtration going on by Mishimoto. That is here somewhere. Um, we got new intercooler boots from Mishimoto. We got Freon for recharging when we do the oil cooler. We got the Bulletproof Diesel Thickum. Uh, these are all your lines that go with your oil cooler. Uh, we got oil that has the arch oil added to it already. We got all new transmission fluid, transmission filter, the toilet paper filter also that goes on there. We got cat coolant. This is cool. The Mishimoto degas bottle. If that ain't pretty, I don't know what is. That'll look nice. We also got belts. And you say belts, there's two belts because this is a dual alternator setup. So I work on some of the industrial trucks that sometimes have a hydraulic pump or something like that mounted right here, which is basically kind of very similar to the dual alternator setup, but uh, never actually mess with a dual alternator setup. So we get to the experience of doing that this time also. So I'm not going to show everything step by step because doing this oil cooler is very similar to Gary's. Uh, it's very similar to doing a regular oil cooler as far as what you're taking apart. So I'm going to probably put you on some time lapse, take stuff apart, hit some high points. And basically I had to make a video on, a, out on this truck because he's such a loyal subscriber and I, I was honored that he wanted nobody to work on his truck but me. And uh, I just feel like I have to make a video. I mean, this is a, a once in a lifetime thing, 38,000 original miles. I'm, I'm sure I will never see that again. And uh, just to show you legit how this is, I mean, look at these seats. And the driver's seat's the same way. He always sits on a towel. I mean, pristine, carpet's pristine. I mean, I'd be wanting to buy this truck off of him. 
if it was four-wheel drive. That's the only thing that's a negative to me about it. I just like the four-wheel drive stance, but man, what a clean truck. One more thing I wanna add is we've already drained the coolant. We've already refilled with distilled water and the VC9, ran it for a good 30 minutes in the shop here, letting it idle, ribbing it up, letting it idle, and uh, drained the coolant again because I wanted everything to be clean in this before we put it back together, even though it's got a superior oil cooler now. I wanted everything in the system to be clean because that was his initial thing he was bringing it to me for where his deltas were. I don't remember the exact number because I haven't driven the truck to see what they were, but uh, on his monitoring system, I want to say he was getting 20 or 25 degrees apart on his engine oil temp and uh, coolant temp. So that was the initial thing that got the whole snowball effect of buying parts back there, which I'm, like I said, excited and honored to put them on. So once again, let's get busy. All right, we are all apart. We're about, I don't know, two and a half hours probably in to get to this point. So here's all our parts that we've taken off. There's our oil cooler top. And this was actually really clean valley. The only thing that you could say was dirty about it is it had a ton of acorns down in there. That's all acorns that were all down in the valley. Scream was all intact. Scream was not, I, that's probably crap that I got on it putting it in there, but Scream was pretty clean. So we're down as far as we have to go down to do our bulletproof diesel oil cooler, our bulletproof diesel EGR. He's got a new drain back and supply line for the turbo. Um, what else do we have here? That may be it up here. Uh, other than we got a new standpipe for the oil filter, stuff like that. Anyways, we're cleaned up, vacuumed everything up. All I'm gonna do is go around all of my gasket surface areas with a uh, scotch bright pad, like I always do, make sure it's all nice and clean. We got all of our holes stopped up for now. So now, let's put on all the new goodies. All right, we got that pretty bulletproof diesel, oil cooler top, transfer, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, torque down, we got our EGR cooler loosely bolted in back there with the band clamp. And we got our blue hose on. So now, since we are retaining the EGR cooler and the EGR valve and everything on this truck, we're gonna pull his EGR valve while the intake is off. It's way easier and we'll make sure his intake is clean. We'll clean the EGR valve and put it back in. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Usually you're doing this on the truck. It's gonna be way easier doing this right here on the floor. And we'll show uh, just how dirty is a 38,000 mile 6.0 EGR valve. There are two eight millimeter bolts. I usually use my cat's paw. You can kind of get underneath these ears and you can see I did just barely bend that one, which will straighten out real easy, but uh, pry it out real careful. A little WD-40 helps sometimes. And I'm kind of surprised at how dirty this one even is. I wasn't expecting that. So uh, we have the new reseal kit, which is the new gasket up here, this fiber gasket and the two new O-rings. So we're gonna go on and pop all that off. We're gonna get this all cleaned up, make sure the valve moves nice and easy and uh, put it back on. All right, so we got her cleaned up and this is what I do to get that lip. You stick your little screwdriver through there and then you can clean that lip up on both of these edges here. That'll hold it up for you. you pull it out, make sure it slides up and down nice and easy. 
and we got her cleaned up. So we're gonna put our new O-rings on, put our new gasket on. I'm gonna clean up the intake now and uh, I'll show y'all doing that. Just get a pick and you're getting all this gunk out from down in here. And some is falling down in the bottom. So once we feel like we've got it cleaned up best we can, we're gonna stick the va shop back down in here with a hose and just suck all the crap out of the bottom. But this is why I don't, I'm not a fan of this. I'm not gonna say anything else, but I'm not a fan of this. So I'm gonna do this and get it sucked out. We'll show y'all the cleaned up final product. All right, we got our cleaned up EGR, new O-rings on it. I did put just a tiny bit of grease on it. You don't wanna goop it way up. Got our new fiber on it. We got our hole cleaned out down there. Best we can, sucked it out with the shop back. Got all the crap out. Just going back in. Just give it a good push. And then put your bolts back in. And that's how you do that. All right, intake is all cleaned up. We got our new gaskets on. We hit it with the wire brush. Got it nice and clean. We got our front and rear bolts stuck through the gasket to hold them in place. We took out all of our paper towels that were in our intake. Uh, before I pull those back out, I always vacuum one more time in case any grit that's falling in there doesn't drop down in the cylinder when I pull them out. Gasket right here on the EGR cooler. I lubricated up this EGR O-ring so it slides in the intake pretty easy. We got our new donut on right here for the water jacket portion. Um, so now we're gonna put that in there and get the uh, EGR bolts all lined up and get our intake bolts started. And then uh, we'll be able to go to town on that. have to forgive me with the fans back here uh temp is 98 99 degrees feels like 108 uh try to move some air through the shop here so let me turn you around and see where we're at all right we got our intake all torqued we got our egr cooler all torqued fan clamp done on the egr cooler put the little heat shield back on went on and hooked the uh, ipr back up put the heat wrapping all back around it because it's all in perfectly original shape which is really nice so got that back on so now we're going to jump on to doing the AC condenser portion because we got to mount the actual external cooler up here on it. So I'm going to get busy pulling the grill and uh, getting access to that. And uh, I got to start sucking down the AC system and uh, getting that out of there. So I'll catch up with y'all when I have both of those done. All of a sudden, loose. Make sure you mark that. This is all in the bulletproof diesel direction. They're really good directions compared to most things you get. And our AC condenser is ready to come out. Go do our work on the All right, so here's what we had to do. This is the heavy duty brackets. This is not the standard package thing. These were extra for him to buy. So usually you would be either screwing, I think you'd be screwing this to the end of your condenser if it has the holes in it. Uh, I think that's what we did with Gary's and we did his. He had the full blown external uh, oil filter, not reusing the factory. So anyways, put the brackets on. This is the line that you use for retaining the factory oil filter. It is not bolted on yet. The instructions said not to bolt it on until the condenser was in. So anyways, that's ready. I got to pull the bumper. I got to get the lower condenser mounts off down there. And uh, that bolts in place of those. You take the rubbers out of the factory condenser mounts, put them in there. And then it came with new mounts to go to the top of that that hold the condenser in front of it. So long story short, that mounts here and you have the condenser in front of it still because you can't put anything in front of your air conditioner or it won't cool good. So I'm gonna get busy pulling the bumper, getting that off and getting that ready to mount. All right, so this has a 17 inch tall transmission cooler. The other size is 14 inches. This is considered the heavy duty. That oil cooler is hitting about this far down so it needs to be lowered about an inch it says to take it off the truck to do it but what i'm going to try to do is grind the top of all these rivets off take the brackets off both sides you have to cut these also so i'll take the power steering 
uh, cooler loose right here and swing it out of my way and I'm gonna cut both brackets and then you go back with these holes in this location right here. That hole goes down here, but you have to cut the bracket off like right here to do that. So I'm gonna get busy doing that. I'll show you all the finished product when I get there. Uh, here's the brackets right here so you can see what we're doing. Those are gonna go there just like that and lower it that amount from where that whole location is to that one up there. All right, so that can be done on the truck without removing the transmission cooler and making a mess. You just gotta make sure your lines aren't getting kinked. Uh, there's enough room for that line to go down and not kink, so just double check that. Otherwise, you'll have to cut it and trim it so it doesn't kink. Uh, but anyways, uh, these rivets have washers that go on the back, make them tighten up even more and hold better. So make sure you use those. But uh, yeah, that's done. So now we can mount uh, the condenser bracket and all that stuff on it. All right, AC condenser all installed lines are tightened back up all the oil cooler lines are put on here tightened up one of them is just stubbed out here for right now which i can get to that one later that one's running up there loose because i wanted to get all this buttoned up here on the front now what i just remembered is i forgot we're doing a low pass uh oil filtration on here so now i have to pull this back a little bit because the fitting if you can see it underneath that one I got to get back to it so I got to tilt this back forward and have enough room to get this line in here and tighten it up because there's a port on that oil cooler as an auxiliary you can use it for the low pass or other things but he's doing a low pass so I got to get back to put that hose on it so we'll catch up then I'm gonna pull a vacuum and I'm probably gonna quit for the night at that point all right so thank goodness for a crow's foot because that saved my butt I'm forgetting that I was able to go right. I can get y'all a shot of it. It's a smaller line right there below the big one down there. And uh, it's just got to come out over here. So now we're just going to, we got our gauges hooked up. We're going to pull a vacuum. I'm going to be done because I don't want this thing having moisture in it. So I'm going to pull a vacuum and we'll go from there. All right, guys, we're back. <clears throat> we actually went on a vacation for the 4th of July. I hope everybody had a good 4th. Um, so this sat with the vacuum pulled on it the whole time we were gone. And you can see it did not drop. So system held a vacuum just fine. Uh, I got out here, I started piddling around with finishing up the low pass oil filtration. So you got your oil in coming from the external cooler and your oil out going back into your oil field tube here uh, this is a shorter I believe it's five inches the factory is seven and a half so this is a shorter one <clears throat> to help clear this elbow with everything else around it so all that's run all that's done so now we're to the point of where I'm gonna leave this off for now until we get the truck running just so I can double check all my fittings with it running in case I need to tighten something up or something like that so this is fine for that this is hanging on right now by the two bumper bolts because I'm waiting on him to bring me the new bumper to put on but I want to be able to go and get the truck running and check for leaks and have everything all good to go. And then when he shows up with the bumper, we can put the new bumper on and he'll be good to go. So now it's your standard operation here of putting everything back together. We're going to put our oil filter housing back on. Before we do that, we're doing the blue spring mine. I have it on the bench over here. So I do have a detailed video of doing the blue spring mine on the truck. This is on the bench right here. This is after you take your cover off here. This is what you have underneath it. You got your spring and your plunger here. This is the main thing that you're changing out here anyways, is that spring. So doing this on the bench is way easier than doing it on the truck, of course. But the only reason you're pulling this little guy out here is to replace this O-ring. This very hard right here. There it is. To replace that O-ring while you're doing it, because all that comes in the kit here. There's your little bitty O-ring there. It actually comes with the new plastic piece. Uh, it's basically a restrictor, as far as I know. You can see it's got that little bitty orifice through the center of it. But anyways, you got one of those in the kit. You got the O-ring for it. You got a new plunger, you got a new spring. You got a new O-ring for there. You got the new O-ring gasket for the housing. 
and it comes with all of your new o-rings that go in here for your oil i mean sorry for your fuel lines so i'm gonna get busy doing this i'm gonna get everything ready to put back on i'll show you any details as far as hooking up the oil lines uh for the external cooler we'll probably do a bunch of time lapse and then we'll have this thing ready to crank back up here for too long all right, so now before we proceed with putting all the other stuff back on the motor, there's one more Bulletproof Diesel product we have to install. This is our six-phase Fickham here. Um, you can run it at, it's set at 48, or you can cut a wire to run it at 53 or 58 volts. He requested that we leave it at 48, so that's what we're going to do. So we got our factory Fickham here. And the first thing you're going to have to do before you even order this, you're going to have to pull your inspection cover off and see if it's the four pin or the seven pin because they're not compatible. So that's your inspection plate right here on this side that you'll pull to check that before you do it. So what we've done so far is we pulled the inspection plate, we pulled the four little Torx screws out that are right there in those posts. We flipped it back over. We took all of our T20 Torx out of the cover here and now we're gonna carefully separate it. There's a gasket in here that you have to reuse. You don't wanna tear it up and you don't wanna mess this thick them up. So I'm going to pry it apart real careful, and I'll show you the inside. We got our shell apart. We got our two halves here. We're now going to open this. This is one more reason why you need to make sure you order the right thing, because this is not returnable once you open the plastic bag here. So make sure you order the right thing. We'll open that up, and then we'll show how it goes in here. They sure do make some pretty parts, and it's a shame that so much of it is covered up, and you don't get to see it when it's put on there, especially when you look at how much it costs. But it's a quality product. But anyways, even got the nice little logo here on the inspection cover. This is as simple as, we're just gonna take that, we're gonna lay it back over here, but we're first gonna take our gasket off this one and then reassemble this, tighten everything back down. Don't over tighten it, just tighten it up, and that's it. So if you were gonna go to the, change the voltage on this, have to look at the directions because i'm not doing it but i believe it's these two wires right here you cut one or the other one of them gives you 53 one of them gives you 58 but like i said we're not doing that we're leaving it alone and there's your finished product on that very simple upgrade to your thickum there so we're gonna go on to the next thing all right so we ran our one oil line the lower one that comes off of the cooler here uh up the directions are, are great from Bulletproof Diesel. It shows you right where they want the hose to run. We got that one hooked up. Uh, per their directions, they want you to do that hose first before you install the turbo. We got our turbo sitting there on the trailer ready to go. We just cleaned it, got a little bit of oil residue off of it. New O-ring on the bottom. Um, that's all ready to go, so we're going to get that put on. And then we can put our oil filter housing on after we uh, replace our oil filter standpipe and all that. I was waiting until the very last thing to replace that before I put that on. So anyways, let's get this turbo on and we can do all that. Turbo time. All right, turbo is all installed. That's all done. We don't have our feed line connected yet because the other 
uh, line going to the external oil cooler up here goes behind the feed line here per the instructions so i'm gonna leave that loose so we put it on <clears throat> before i put that on i'm gonna get this charger cooler pipe put on uh, but before I can put it on, he's got a whole brand new set of Mishimoto uh, intercooler boots. So I'm going to go on and pull the old ones off, put those on, get this pipe installed, and then we can run our other line that goes to the external oil cooler. Uh, another thing worth noting is when you're putting this turbo on, loosen the up pipes. You got to loosen the up pipes up and loosen. If you're still running an EGR cooler, you got to loosen up the band clamp on the EGR cooler just a little bit so that you have enough room to make that up just right without fighting and messing up the bellows on the pipes or anything doing it. This charger cooler pipe is on with the new Mishimoto boots. Uh, this is fun doing with all this. This is the dual alternator setup. So this pipe comes up a little bit higher. So this is routed just slightly different than what the bulletproof diesel pictures show because of how much higher this pipe is because of having the second alternator. Um, anyways, turbo feed line is hooked up, uh, VGT, engine oil temp, cooling temp, all that stuff is wired up down there. I just got to uh, put the oil filter housing on after I put the new standpipe and drain back valve in. And uh, yeah, this is standard, putting it back together. Uh, there's no more bulletproof diesel stuff to install. All the fancy stuff is done. So I'm gonna put you on time lapse, get all this stuff put together and uh, we'll be ready to crank her up then. Man, for this truck to only have 38,000 original miles, this booger was fun to get off. Freaking exhaust back pressure too. That thing started out, it was almost welded in there. I finally got it worked loose. I figured this would be easy, but it wasn't. New thermostat, new exhaust back pressure sensor, new exhaust back pressure sensor tube. Um, last thing we have to put on is the bulletproof diesel water pump. And then of course, putting our belts, our fan, and our shroud back on. Put the Ficum on, which I'm not gonna put it on right now because I'm gonna get everything together and I'm gonna crank the truck over so that it doesn't crank up and uh, get some oil run back to this system. It's been sitting while I did the oil cooler. Uh, turbo's been off. We have a new external oil cooler, which I did pre-fill with some oil, but of course there's still air in these lines and everything else. So we got some cranking to prime the system. So I'm gonna crank it over until my oil pressure gauge actually registers. And then at that point, uh, I'll throw the thickum on and then I'll be ready to crank up. That there is a whole lot of belts there going on with a dual alternator setup. It's really not bad putting the belts on, but it looks bad when you look at it. All right, fan is on, shrouds are on. Got the wire harness run back here. We're gonna leave this off, like I said, till we crank it up so I can double check all my connections and be able to see them real good just to make sure everything's good. I just realized I may be running into a problem here with the Mishimoto coolant filtration. That's gonna be really close to the filter 
that line, which I can push it down some. We'll see how that works. But I was getting ready to do this, uh, get this Mishimoto all mounted up over here on this side, put that charger cooler pipe on, radiator hose back on over there, put the new degas bottle on, and uh, well, not put the new degas bottle on yet. I'm gonna crank over and let it build some more pressure first, and it'd be easier to put the thickum on with that off. Anyways, just talking through this with y'all. I'm gonna get this side buttoned up with the Mishimoto and do what I can over there, all except for the thickum. All right, we got her filled up with oil. Everything's together other than the air intake and the thickum. All we're doing is priming the system up now, getting oil back up to the turbo, uh, starting to fill those lines up for the external oil cooler, all that good stuff. And then we'll put the thickum on and really fire up. Pickham is on. Like y'all saw a minute ago, we got her all primed up. Stick the uh, degas bottle on, air intake, fill it up with coolant, and uh, we're ready to fire up. So, what I'm more excited about than putting this pretty thing on, is putting this pretty thing on. That's just good looking to me. I like that. So, let me throw that on, get some coolant, get the air intake on, and we'll fire this thing up. Topping this off with some high quality cat ELC here. We'll be ready to crank this up in a second. All right, we're ready to try to fire up. We're gonna sit here and watch the uh, high pressure oil build up, watch our IPR and all that, and just checking everything out. So we got uh, ICP, IPR, uh, engine oil temp, engine coolant temp, Fickham main power, and Fickham sink here. And we're gonna watch all that while we crank. I fired up quick because we primed it up good earlier. So probably spit and sputter here a little bit if we got some air in the system. I'm gonna get out here and check everything, make sure nothing's leaking. All right, I'm charging up the AC, just double checking everything, looking for any leaks, anything like that. I'll let it sit here and run until I get that charged up. I'm gonna throw the grill on it, gotta throw the hood lights back on. A little balance right there under the hood. I'm gonna leave it run and do all that stuff. Just double check everything and then we're gonna take her for a spin. All right, we're taking her out for a spin. Making sure everything's good. Well, there goes the intercooler pipe right off the bat. All right, take two on this. It blew that intercooler pipe off right off the, uh, the turbo on the, uh, the pipe side of the 45 degree boot. And I guess maybe I, I didn't go quite tight enough. I try not to go too tight because I don't want to strip them things out, but we're gonna try this again. All right, Mishimoto, boots are good quality, but these clamps suck. I'm putting the factory clamps back on with the Mishimoto boot over here because these, these clamps just suck. They barely got enough room at the loosest point to even get them over their boot when you get on anything. So you're fighting with trying to not even have the clamp where you can slide it to put it where it really needs to be and tighten stuff up. So don't sell boots if you can't sell a clamp that's worth a crap. All right, so I blew them off again that time, came back. I put uh, both factory clamps up here on the boot coming off the turbo. <clears throat> and then I noticed that this one had started to slide off also. So I put two factory clamps here and you can tighten these up a whole lot more because I tried to go a little bit tighter on that one after I discovered it slid off and this clamp stripped out very easily. So, I mean, they feel cheap and I think they look cheap. Those clamps are superior over those. So I made sure everything else is tight. We're gonna go try it again. If this happens <clears throat> again, I'm gonna be very tempted to pull all these boots off and put the factory ones on there and tell them and he's just send them back because I'm I've been very displeased with aftermarket boots more often than not. So anyways, let's go try this again. All right, so I've been driving it. It's fine now with the factory clamps on both of those. Uh, drove it down the interstate, wound her up to about 100, drove her hard for a second, won't blow nothing off. So we're at our little test spot now. Let's see what she does in our little quarter mile run that we do here all the time. Bone stock 6.0, Blue Spring Mod, bone stock other than the stuff y'all saw me do to it now.
68, 70, I think is what it was. Not too bad. All right, so finished up on the truck. He's supposed to come get it tomorrow. He gave me a bunch of other little small things to do to it, other than all the bulletproof stuff you saw, which I wasn't gonna video. We did uh, drop this pan, change the, the fluid in the transmission pan, and put a filter in there. He wanted to change the toilet paper filter also. And uh, Brian was working on it. And then called me, I was out having to run some errands, and he said, hey, we got kind of a problem. Look at the threads there. There's the problem. And the housing looks even worse, which this is a common thing. It's never been took off, but like we said again, this is a low mile truck. So uh, anyways, $280 later, where's it at? So $280 later gets you a new external transmission filter. And there is a different part number for a build date. Uh, I think it's an 05, they went to a little bit different style. I can't tell you exactly what's different. I think it's the bracket is the main thing. I think the housing's actually the same, but it's a different part number. This one's actually cheaper, the older style is. But just by 30 or $40, but it's cheaper. Anyways, we're gonna get this put on, finish doing this transmission. I gotta change the uh, upper and lower fuel filter because I have forgot to do that while we're doing all this. And uh, fill it up with transmission fluid. He's coming to get the truck tomorrow, bringing the new bumper like we mentioned before to get on the front. So we'll swap over all the lower valance and the plastic to the new chrome bumper and uh, he'll be ready to go. And uh, we'll show you all that tomorrow. So we'll catch up then. All right guys, Automatic Garage back today. We got Pete and Dan. The truck we've been working on here is Pete's truck. Dan's his good friend. Which we're going to show Dan's truck real quick out here, too. He's got a really good-looking low-mile uh, 7.3 Dooley also. But uh, Pete showed up with his new bumper. I'm going to turn you around here. So you might say, what's so special about that? But, I mean, it takes a good 45 minutes or an hour to do it. We just did move all the plastic over, all the brackets over, the fog lights, and line it all up because it's made in Taiwan. Taiwan. <laughs> so we're going to throw this bumper on real quick. Not much to it. Uh, the only thing extra that's, that's out of the ordinary is there's the rock shield that goes around the low pass filter there. So uh, we're going to get this thrown on real quick and uh, we're going to go grab some lunch. All right, you go ahead. You say what you want to say first. Oh, appreciate Andrew stepping up for me and doing the boat proof on it. Uh, I'm really proud of his work and he uh, has a great attitude. You can't beat him. Come see him sometime if you need some work on your truck. My only complaint is that he wouldn't let me do headstone. I, I tried to talk him into doing it. He didn't want to do it. He said, well, it doesn't need it. And I agree, it doesn't really need it if you don't tune it. But I would have liked it better. Yeah. But he brought some cool stuff up here with us. He got us a, uh, me and Lee, it's a bulletproof diesel koozie. And uh, grab that corner of the flag, Pete. Okay. So Pete is, I think I've mentioned this in the video before, Pete is a veteran and he was a Navy CB. And he said, he, I had to have this hang in my shop now. So we're going we're gonna to probably hang this up on the wall. Uh, for Pete, which both of my great uncles were CBs during World War II also. So the, the flag means something else also other than, than just Pete was a CB. So it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, next thing we're doing, he got a hat. I think me and Leo will probably end up splitting the hat. We'll probably each wear it some. As long as Leo let me bend the bill a little bit because I can't wear a straight bill. And then uh, here's the big thing that Pete's super proud of right here. <clears throat> he got his bulletproof diesel. Is this is is this included with all the stuff you buy? Yeah, I didn't know. You, I mean, if you were to buy this alone, it's a hundred dollars a piece for this badge. But they give it to you when you spend as much money as you do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's a fact. I got it. So we've already selected our spot and prepped our spot where where it wants to go. And Pete said, "What do you think?" So I I decided that I thought right here, below the F three fifty, was the best spot. And just running it about the same, parallel with the F three fifty. So if I can peel the stuff off, it's always fun to get off. Does it look like it's running pretty straight to you, Dan? Looks good. Dan's a body man, y'all. So he made me nervous to put the bumper together. He said I did okay, though. <laughs> so what hurt my feelings a little bit is Pete goes, Hey, Lee, you want to drive it? I didn't even get asked. <laughs> so we just got done eating a big lunch. And before we all give our farewells to, to Pete here, I wanted to show Dan's 7.3 here. That's pretty clean. How many miles? 140. 140,000 miles. I'm gonna turn y'all around here. We'll take a quick look at it. So does does the Southern Comfort mean anything about a special edition or outfit yeah, or anything? The running boards. That's the running boards and stuff. Yeah, it's got a different package to it. So 
but it's clean. Back seat don't look like it's ever been sat in hardly. I'm not a running board fan, but my dad is. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. You can't find these. These were custom, custom made. But it's a good looking truck. It's clean. Well, that's all she wrote. Pete's on his way back with his all bulletproof 6 0, my all bulletproof, everything but studs. Anyways, we got it done. Nice, clean truck. Did the auxiliary tank in the bed. A uh, whole bunch of other stuff. Maybe, I don't even remember if I videoed all that or not. But anyways, happy customer. Enjoyed meeting them. Had a good lunch. Been uh, one of my first subscribers from when we started the channel. Following everything. And uh, we've talked hours on the phone. Not just about his truck. Just life in general even. But a uh, great guy. This automated garage signing out. Y'all like, subscribe, comment. Go check out all of our other content on the channel. A whole lot of Ford and Power Stroke stuff. Uh, we're on Facebook and Instagram. If you're looking for somebody to work on your truck, you're in the Mid-South area, we're in West Tennessee. Contact info is on the website. This is Automatic Garage signing out. We'll holler at y'all later.